I have personally generated over $10 million with Google Ads and have consistently optimized Google Ads campaigns for e-commerce brands under my Google Ads agency, Euro Marketing, to help them scale past $100,000 every month. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you step by step how I optimize Google Ads campaigns for the e-commerce brands I handle. Whether your brand is looking to scale to the next level or just get some traction going in the first place with the campaigns, this strategy will help. So watch until the end there's various different ways to optimize both in the front end meaning the google ads campaign side of things and also the back end meaning the product pages product feed etc etc things specifically which you can directly optimize based on the data coming in and in terms of the front end because that's where we're starting there's various different techniques to optimize when it comes to a shopping campaign versus search campaign versus display discovery youtube so let's start off by understanding how to optimize your shopping campaigns now in this case we're gonna start off by looking at the performance max campaigns because that's everybody's favorite nowadays first of all before you even begin optimizing you need to make sure that there is a decent amount of data within that specific campaign and when i say decent i mean at least seven to 14 days worth of data or at least 500 dollars to a thousand dollars worth of ad spend on a brand new performance max campaign the way that you optimize whether you optimize a lot or whether you barely optimize it's going to depend on one thing, which is the return on ad spend. So this specific column right here, which is conversion value over cost. If this is low, then obviously you need to be taking greater action to get this number high. If this is where you want it to be, then obviously you don't want to just optimize for the sake of optimization. Believe me, this is one of the biggest reasons why I have personally uh -huh. destroyed my brand several times just because I had nothing better to do. And I thought optimizing was the way to go. I mean, I almost thought it was mandatory, which by by the way is not the case really look at the last 7 to 14 days worth of data but when i'm optimizing i technically like looking at last 30 days first and then last 14 days to see how the roas has been going so for example if we start with last 30 days we can see the roas is very high it's 5.78x for this brand and if we now change it back to last 14 days we can see it has almost dropped in half so obviously between this period something has happened and there might be some optimizations needed to really get it back on track i do see in the recent week it has gone back up so sometimes i might look at last seven days as well but in this case the roas by conversion time column it does look like things are going back up but in cases where if it were not going back up then this would be a campaign that i would definitely look into optimizing heavily if my last optimization was done seven to 14 days ago so that's the first step of the optimization step number two then is going into the accounts and understanding where you want to begin now i personally like to begin by looking at the asset groups first i don't really look at the inside section or the auction insights because there's really very limited data you can be getting i mean it does tell you exactly what the target is in the last seven days or last 28 days and it does give you a general idea of what you should be doing but that's more for the back end we're looking at the front end right now so we start off with asset groups and we look at the overall numbers with the asset groups themselves you cannot really specifically look at any data but you do want to see how many assets you have running at any given time and if you have multiple assets you want to take a mental note of what each asset is for so this first one is just an asset with a bunch of different images but with no audience signals and the second one is called the super signal asset group which is paused at the moment so we only have one asset running once i'm clear as to what asset is running i move on to the third step which is going on over to listing groups now this really applies to you if if you have multiple different assets running at any given time like for example if both of these were running the first ad group asset group and then the second one the super signal asset group then i would need to kind of come in here and understand which one is doing better if it's the first ad group that's doing better or if it's the second one so for this brand right here the reason why the second super signal asset group was actually just shut off completely was because the ROAS was much lower than the first asset groups ROAS which by the way if you do have multiple asset groups running right now and you have not really optimized them this is the first thing you want to do especially if you have decent amount of data understand which asset group from the multiple ones you have running is actually getting you sales and is actually profitable versus which one uh -huh. isn't i mean if we look at these overall numbers we can see the second asset group which had a bunch of signals had actually a lower cpc than the first one it had a higher ctr than the first one but despite these things 
it was not able to give us as much profit as the first one which by the way should let you know that that's why conversion value over cost your ROAS means everything it does not matter what the CPC is nor does it matter what the CTR is if ROAS is not following you get rid of it here we don't have multiple asset groups running so we don't necessarily need to do anything within listing groups but if you did personally that's your first step just exclude the listing group that are the asset group in this case which is not performing well and if there's multiple that are kind of in a like a head and head match where they're almost the same let it run for 7 to 14 days longer and then next time you optimize understand which one is the winner and shut the other one off that's the whole reason why you should even have multiple asset groups to begin with this is going to bring us to the products optimization period where now we look at the actual individual products to understand which product should be excluded to understand what should be optimized so on and so forth so there's a few different columns i like to add to understand these numbers and that's conversions conversion value over cost obviously cost over conversion conversion rate and then finally conversion value so we're just gonna add those columns in and what we're gonna do is we're gonna rank it by the most ad spent to the least in the last 13 days first we want to understand what's profitable what's not profitable so on and so forth so once we have that done then our product optimization phase begins here I like to keep it fairly simple right now for performance max campaigns we're basically again taking the ROAS into consideration and understanding what is performing the best versus what is not performing the best clearly this is a 1.36x ROAS that's well above our means we do not want to be running a product that is such a low ROAS because what happens is if you let a product that's not really profitable run it takes the valuable budget that other products could be getting and it feeds it to this underperforming product so that's really not what we, what we want we want to optimize it and in this case what I do when I'm optimizing every 7 to 14 days is I'm taking a mental note of what's a good ROAS what's not a good ROAS so for example for this brand anything above a 2x for every single product is profitable so this would be on our list of exclusion and then we would move on down the list to see what should be excluded as well this one should also be excluded because of the fairly low ROAS and then basically all we're doing here is we're going down this list looking at all of the ad spends and understanding what is crossing our profit margins let's say for example since majority of these products are $600 I can spend up to $200 to get a single sale that means that some of these products they might spend $84 or they might spend well above that into a $100 range and still not get a sale this is a number you will need to determine for your own brand and if the product crosses that without a sale in the last 30 to 14 days you simply exclude it that's the second really big phase of optimization when it comes to your products and product exclusions it's fairly simple you just copy that item id right here and then from listing groups what you want to do is you want to look at that specific ad group or asset group which is currently active and then just click that pen button because when you are taken to this page right here you can just paste in that specific item id and choose it so then on this page come in and just exclude completely from this section right here it's literally that simple this is kind of the first half of the optimization phase i'm taking most of my brands through as well as brands under my google ads agency or marketing which if you're currently doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can potentially work together and make that happen but once you're done optimizing the products it's now time to move on to the setting side of things now within settings there's really no direct optimization available besides just increasing the target row as or decreasing it or the third option shutting it off completely so these optimization things here I normally do every 14 to 30 days I don't like to do it too often because obviously this is a pretty drastic change but I would normally even do it in the first place if either my performance of my campaign is very good so for example it has been increasing steadily in the past 28 days right here that's a good sign that means I can potentially scale this brand even further if I let go of some of my restrictions which means I might need to lower my target row as set here by about 10 to 25 percent so from 550 percent to maybe 540 percent or 535 percent those are some ideal numbers or if I want to be very risky I could just uncheck this box and let the campaign just fly freely and do what it does best of getting me more customers so these are two options in terms of optimization on the other hand if it's not performing so well obviously it doesn't make sense to lower the restrictions because then you're going to end up spending way too much money and you're already unprofitable to begin
begin with. So that's not really a realistic option for you. So instead, you can potentially increase it by about 10 to 20 percent from 550 to maybe 560 or 570. And that's going to force it to actually go out and find the right people for you. Now, before we go on to the back end optimizations, for PMAX or shopping in general, let's look at search campaigns really quick. Because first of all, if you have multiple ad groups within a search campaign, what you need to be doing is you need to be taking care of each ad group individually and treating it like its own campaign. So for this campaign right here, just because I have two different ad groups does not mean that I need to optimize each one of them every seven to 14 days. I could optimize this one today and then two days later, I could optimize this one. And then after seven days from today, I could optimize this one again. So it doesn't really mean I need to optimize both at the same time. But what you need to be doing is you need to be optimizing based on the results. Now, this campaign is running on target CPA because I nowadays I do find more success running search campaigns on smart bidding options. But basically, I'm looking at the same data here as I would with the shopping campaign or a PMAX campaign, the ROAS. If my ROAS is below the numbers I would want, then I go inside that specific ad group and I understand if it's the actual keywords which are bringing down my results like for example some of these keywords they have spent a lot of money but they've not gotten any decent result like for example this one this keyword spent forty dollars with zero sales but this one it got a quarter of a conversion and this one got zero sales and then this one is driving majority of the sales right now so that's going to give me a general idea of what's working what's not working so from here i have the ability of either excluding these keywords individually fully or going back and either increasing or decreasing my target CPA. And obviously, if my campaign is not doing too well or my ad group is not doing too well, what makes sense is actually decreasing the CPA by a few dollars. So maybe going from target CPA of $100 to $95 or $90. And that's because in this situation, it's going to basically spend a bit less. As you can see, it says estimated 0.11 fewer conversions and $13.53 decrease in cost. We want to decrease the cost if it's not doing too well. That's kind of like the first way of optimizing a search campaign. The next way of optimizing is actually fixing up the individual ads within each given ad group. So right here, I don't really pay attention to the ad strength. That's really irrelevant. What I do pay attention to is this number right here, which is the CTR. And I want it to be as high as possible. As we can see, this one is at 11% CTR, this one's 7%. But just because one is higher does not mean it's performing better. I mean, even with the higher CTR, the cost per conversion is much higher than this one right here. So that already lets you know that it's not all about CTR. But if my CTR was very low, meaning 5% or less for a search campaign, then obviously I would want to go in and fix up my ad copy every 14 days or so. And I would basically monitor it to see how it's performing. If it's doing better, and my CTR is higher, then I would keep it the same or maybe even kind of adjust it a bit more. But if it's doing worse, then I would kind of revert back to the changes I made. Very simple ways of optimizing the search campaign in terms of the ad copies. Now moving on to keywords. This is where majority of the optimization is done. When you're optimizing keywords, you want to be very careful because just excluding one keyword, even if it's a very small one that you think won't affect things much, that could actually end up destroying your campaign completely, which is one of the reasons why, despite this keyword spending $288 with zero sales, we're letting it run. Because the second keyword here, which has an 18x ROAS, it's very similar to this first keyword. So if we were to exclude this keyword, there's a very good chance a lot of this traffic from the second keyword will be excluded as well, which we do not want. Now we have already added a few negative keywords here but those are very broad negative keywords obviously you cannot see it for security reasons but when doing exclusions with keywords keep it very broad don't try to be too specific and too direct and narrow exclude everything based on exact match because a lot of the times it can actually backfire on you you want to be very careful nowadays when optimizing your search campaigns do it every 14 days in terms of the keywords try to be as narrow as possible if you see some keywords which are similar to those getting results it might be a good idea to just let them run in the first place but that is pretty much sums up how i would optimize a search campaign really not too difficult just optimizing based on the results coming in let's now move on to actually understanding how to optimize the back end because now it's not sufficient to just optimize your campaigns you need to actually be optimizing your product pages your seo so on and so forth based on the data so 
with Performance Max, a lot of e-commerce store owners don't realize that you can actually look at the inside section to understand how to optimize the back end like I was telling you earlier. So if you scroll all the way down to Consumer Spotlight, we can see all of these keywords that we're currently ranking for. And in fact, if we kind of make the list bigger, we can see there's a bunch of different keywords the inside section is telling us. And that is exactly what we want to look into. We want to understand, number one, which keywords are getting us results. You can actually open up this keyword list and click View Details to further see which keywords are actually getting you sales and see what's not getting you sales. Because the way to optimize the back end is fairly simple. Basically, take whatever is getting you sales here from these keywords and incorporate it into your description as well as your title because when you do search engine optimization you're already improved the quality of your landing pages and make it easier for the algorithm to actually get you those results so there's other things you could be optimizing as well things such as your product images things such as your product pricing itself as well but normally i do not like to do that for products that are getting me results if i want to kind of do optimizations on a product getting results like for example this one i would duplicate that product and test those optimizations on a brand new duplicated product page instead of harming the original one. Because if the product change is not good, that could completely destroy the optimization of that campaign for that given product. And even if you revert back the change, there's a very good chance that that might not make a much of a difference at all anymore. So that's why I'm very cautious when doing optimizations for winning products. But of course, if it's a losing product like this one, it's not really getting any sales. Then I would look at things like the CTR. If I notice the CTR is very low what i would start to do is i would start by optimizing my product image because in most cases the product image is the reason why barely anybody's clicking on your ad and that's because your product image is not popping out enough if that doesn't work and if that doesn't improve results in 14 days i would potentially lower the price and if that still doesn't work i would just completely exclude that product from that campaign and move it to another campaign or just let it rest in peace forever but again kind of to recap because i know i covered a lot in terms of optimizations for your shopping campaigns there's really not too much differences between the performance max campaign versus a standard shopping campaign it's really about optimizing those things that we can optimize for pmax it's the assets it's the products it's even the settings for standard shopping which i really did not cover it's essentially the same thing but obviously you don't have assets so all you can optimize there is the products and the bid you can adjust the bid based on the results. For search campaigns, it's fairly similar, but in that case, you would also be optimizing the ad copies if you're not doing too well. That's pretty much how I optimize campaigns for e-commerce brands, both for my own brands, as well as my clients' brands under my Google Ads agency, Your Marketing, which if you're currently doing $40,000 or more per month in revenue, you need just a little bit of extra help scaling your brand to the next level. Go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can potentially work together and make that happen. But I want you to watch this video right here on how you can potentially triple your ROAS with Google Ads following this one trick I found out about.